can't help it. I can't help myself. <laughs> Where's the dancing? What's happening? No dancing. <laughs> no dancing. No. no dancing. Hello, everybody. I'm Gina, and welcome to Noon on Tuesday. Um, we recently, at Benissimo, uh, had an inaugural trip where we took 10 uh, adventurers, culinary adventurers, on a tour through Italy, where they got to um, make cheese, see cheesemakers, cook with chefs, Tuscan chefs, uh, visited uh, all sorts of things, but they can tell you much better than I can. So we've invited some of the guests here today, along with our host, Robbie G, who uh, spearheaded this whole adventure hello, hello. and uh, just kind of wanted to talk about this adventure in Italy and uh, see what was good, what was bad, what was evil, what we want to do again. Welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having us <laughs> yeah. thanks, and thanks you guys for being here. Yeah. I'll, I'll just kind of start it by saying that it was average I would say. Okay. okay. Are you going to introduce our guest you guys? <laughs> um, yeah actually we should introduce the guest. Uh, to my left here is, is David Mullering and next to David is Lori Wasserman. Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> Welcome, and, guests. And thanks to the studio audience for the applause there. <laughs> um, so this, uh, this idea started years ago um, with, uh, with doing events and, and doing the classes with it, at the Academy of Cheese at Benissimo. And it was really inspired by some of our trips to, to Europe and, um, and visiting cheesemakers and getting kind of a behind-the-scenes uh, view of everything. And we thought, how great would it be someday to bring our customers to see that hospitality, to eat, and to just be adventurous and, and, and to share that passion and that love. And um, so we were so grateful that we had 10 customers um, who are now friends. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and I think even in, they were food lovers already, but I think even more so now, um, they, they've, they've really um, – been able to see what, what we get to see as, as kind of insiders, and now they're foodie insiders. Yeah, because that's really good, because, Rob, it wasn't just a tour, because we worked with an Italian, yeah. right, to put this together, someone that could really take us off the beaten path. And I should I should mention, I should have mentioned uh, Laura already. So uh, Laura Massoni, who, uh, whose company is called Sea Italy, is a travel company based out of Turin in, in northern Italy, and she, we met because she was at a at an event we did, and I had a captive audience, and I knew everybody had a couple glasses of wine, and so I thought I would bounce this idea off the group. We had maybe 20 people there in Del Mar that night, and I said, hey, what if, what if we uh, put together foodie um, insider cheese trips where we took customers to go see the cheesemakers – and maybe we'll stay in in the farmhouse, and and we'll go, you know, we'll go meet the sheep and meet the cows, and and eat and drink along the way. And um, so she emailed the next day and said, "Hey, I, I have this travel company called Sea Italy. I'd love to work with you guys on this." And um, so we, Gina and I, sat down with Laura and said, "Hey, here's our dream itinerary. We'd like to go to to Italy, starting in the north. Um, we'd like to see Piedmont. We'd like to see." Parma, and we'd like to end up in the Tuscan Tuscany area, maybe ten days. Mm -hmm. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> and she came back and had everything just nailed. And so we, um, so we put it out there, and, and um, we had some interest, and we got some signups. And when we got there, I just have to. I'm going I'm to pass it on to you guys, but I have to say that the trip completely exceeded our expectations as hosts. Um, so, so hopefully as guests as well, right? I, I hope so. I'll, and I'll just um, kind of give a, a brief overview and let you guys talk about your, you know, maybe some of your favorite uh, parts of the experience. But we did four days in a town called La Mora, which is in um, is in Piedmont or Piemonte, and it kind of this little village overlooks the rolling hills of Barolo, um, amazing wine country. Um, the hotel was great; it was boutiquey. They they really the hospitality there is just unreal. Any good food? No good food. Mm. Yeah, the Any food wine? Was awful. The food was awful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe let's start with Piedmont. What were your favorite parts of Piedmont? Uh, oh, my favorite parts. Um, let's see. Well, being as uh, an introduction for my husband and I to Europe, everything was my favorite part of Piedmont. Right. The, the scenery, the wine, the people, and I think for us. Well, we we started – we had two nights in Milan and then to Piedmont. So just to get into the country and way slower pace and such a small town and the history um, 
and we were kidding about the food. It was amazing. <laughs> it was really amazing. And our um, our personal tour guide slash translator, Sandro, Super Sandro Manila, um, is also a sommelier. So he was setting up perfect pairings with all the food. and That's awesome. So it was nice to have this... Uh, 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 local Italian with you the whole time, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and he, yeah. yeah. He was, that was kind of unexpected. I knew Sandro would be there. I, I didn't know that he was going to be so good at his job. I mean, he was, like like Lori said, he was a sommelier, but he was also just all around. He he was from Piedmont, and he knew all of the, the places that we visited personally. I mean, he was friends with them, uh, and he knew just a ton about food. Sure, so history. He knew history. He knew everything about everything, it seemed, right? Yeah, he was into it. And yeah. you, could, you could tell he was enjoying giving us a knowledge and helping us along the way. There wasn't ever really a point where he threw up his hands or anything like that. He was excellent. That's awesome. So, and that was your first time, you said, um, right, Lori? To uh, ever my be husband, to, to Neil, Europe and I, and, yeah. first time to awesome. Europe ever. ever. So uh, I think we did it right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now, David, you had been to Italy before, Yes. Uh, yeah, my Another wife, area? Alma, and I went seven years ago, but it was sort of one of those, if Tuesday, it must be Belgium. We were everywhere for 15 days. And ah, right, and you're really seeing everything. And absorb a whole bunch. Sure. Um, one thing about the introduction, though, is I'm not a foodie, and I wasn't before I went, but I am now. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry you know. about that. Right. You're okay. ruined. You do know this now. <laughs> <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Was, uh, yeah. Hopefully it's not once in a lifetime. Right. No, you. no, no. It will not be. And we'll get to that most, right. most definitely. Right. Good, good, good. So you started there and you got to, of course, then go to Bra, which is the birth. It's the town that's the birth of the slow food movement. Um, so that's kind of interesting, right? Just to kind of yeah. be there. And it's a beautiful place Tell anyway. Why, why yeah. it's the birth of the slow food yeah. movement? Because in 1986, I think it was, or it was sometime in the mid 80s, a McDonald's moved into town. Seriously? And they were not having it. And that sparked this whole movement. Really? Yep. Farm to Great table. Story. Slow food. Um, and um, so they, they opened like a university there. And that was really um, where it started. And we saw, we, we went to a guy's home. His name was Silvio Pistone. And I think Lori and I both agree that it was our highlight because the, on the final night we were there, we were, we kind of went around the dinner table and said what our highlight of the, of the trip was. Um, I should mention before we went to Silvio, while we were in the bra area we went to a little cheese shop and we had a whole cheese tasting and, and we opened a, a wheel of parm uh there we went to a, a truffle shop nearby in alba we went to a butcher shop and watched sausage get made um, <laughs> and then we we took a little day trip up into the longa hills to this guy's house and the, the house was a work of art in itself this guy was the most true and and and, and just he was the most ins- insanely artistic, um, interesting oh, yeah. <laughs> guy, <Authentic>. guy <laughs> authentic, <laughs> everything guy we've ever met. So we pull up into his house, which is on this hill overlooking um, vineyards and a beautiful um, this beautiful landscape. And he built his house with his own two hands. He had a little garden on the side, which... So all of the the veggies and and herbs came from that garden. He made his own cheese from his own sheep who lived upstairs because his house was built like into this hill. That's crazy. What did he call that upstairs? He called it the penthouse, which is where (laughs) Mm -hmm. he kept his 35 sheep. Um, And then he he had a little – he had a little cabin sort of outside that he, again, built by hand. And we went out after we, we toured his, his home and his kitchen where he had his own homemade uh, pizza oven. He had, um, he had like a, a whole sort of room of antiques. So he was into antiquing. He was wearing a The Who shirt. And mm-hmm. so he said his other passions besides making everything was uh, music and antiquing. And so we, and he was also had a room that we, he had a room that we didn't even, we just walked by, we didn't even go into that had a bunch of canvases where he would paint. So we went outside after that and he brought us um, all the cheeses that he makes, as well as a frittata that he made that day with herbs from his garden. He brought out, um, his son was a photographer, so we were looking at his son's photography 
all the while overlooking these amazing, this, this beautiful scenery. Go ahead. Let us not forget <laughs> the June Ka. The June Ka. June Ka. Which is, and how do you spell that? I can't remember. I think know. it was G I U N C A. That sounds right. And it was a specialty cheese that Silvio obviously made that we were given the strong impression that he only shares with very, very special guests. Wow. Because he's an acquaintance and friend of our tour guide, Sandro. So that's how that happened. And it was it was delightful. And it's this doesn't do justice to uh, the taste of this June Ka, but I was thinking to myself, it's kind of like a farmer's cheese and kind of like a cottage cheese, but more like a... Um, not jello, but a, a smooth, a smooth texture. Okay, weird description, but mm-hmm. we kept eating it and eating it <laughs> and, and eating, eating it. and eating. And because fresh, it's fresh. something you, not only can you unfortunately not get Silvio's cheeses, mm-hmm. but just to get the June Ka, the special traditional. It's a specialty for holidays, I think he said. Yeah. So wow, yeah. Yeah, that's that's something that um, unless you have an in to meet someone like that, how would you ever get to experience that? Just for you to have an, a, an Italian friend, right? But he's become your friend. It sounds like they, they. So he has all soft raw milk cheeses that are made right there. Nothing leaves the area. I think I think there, he had one customer in, in the south of France, right, a restaurant. Um, mm-hmm. But they're that's, all yeah. they're fresh raw milk cheeses that he, that he makes right there. So the only way that you can taste this stuff is to go there to his home. Which yeah. we were fortunate enough to do. To do, yeah. What did you think, David? You're into photography, and too. Did you see interesting things to shoot? And <laughs> you know, it wasn't what... uh, didn't have a whole lot of time to be creative, but I did shoot some portraits of some of the people that I found fascinating. So yeah, yeah. And one of the things that struck me about <clears throat> Silvio was, you know, his house is old and hand built, and then you saw his area where he made the cheese, and it's like an antiseptic little. Uh, yeah, crazy. Yeah, like an operating room. It was mm. beautiful the way mm-hmm. he separated the two. I, I found that pretty fascinating. Pretty fascinating, yeah. yeah. In the middle of, you know, it's in the hills, right? Kind of yeah. what you could call it in the Below middle of the nowhere. Sheep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> amongst the sheep and everything. Yes. And then, yeah. 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 Was cheese making for you two, was it what you expected it to be when you saw the process of cheese making? Because you got to see something like Silvio's Little mm-hmm. Farm. And then you got to go to Parma to the yeah, big Parmigiano Reggiano uh, producers. Was it what you expected? I, I, I suppose. Um, it wasn't quite what we expected. I, I didn't really know what to expect, mm-hmm. but that's why it was such a great surprise. Yeah. Um, I just want to share a quick note about Silvio before we leave that topic. Uh, mo- many of us came away from his place with um, a DVD documentary that I, I haven't watched it yet, and I, I don't think he's the star, but he's one of the components of the documentary, and it's called Longe Doc. So it's L-A-N-G-H-E, second word, DOC, D-O-C, which stands not only for documentary in short, but also for the type of, one of the types of controls that they do on cheese and wine and, and many foods. Okay, yeah. very good. Like our AOC, they're mm-hmm. D-O-C. Okay. Play on words. Right, right, right. All right. Thanks for remembering that, too. Sure, sure. Is I, that something you think you can see online somewhere, or is it was it just, it, possibly. I could probably maybe look it up. Uh, Longa Doc. Longa yeah. Doc. Mm-hmm. He had he had like five copies there in his house, and we we bought them up from, from him. Yeah. So I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Just Google. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. So cheese there. Um, any wine along alongst the journey? <laughs> Did we have uh, any wine? I, wine? <laughs> Do you remember at this point? And how no, much but the did best part buy? is no hangover. <laughs> okay, so isn't that interesting? Yes, I'm not a wine drinker, and yeah. I drank a bunch. A bunch. And yeah. No after effects. And no after effects. Yeah. That's great, right? Yeah, and that's we, we, it's always fascinating. You know, everyone says this. You know, you travel over there. You sit down. You're drinking wine all day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're not, you know, hungover. You're not sluggish or you just don't oh. feel like, ah. Uh, and this is because you say, how do they do it? And you're like, well, I can do that too if it's, if it's like that. Yeah. Sulfites, that'd yeah, be a sulfites, topic, right? Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. What was, um, <laughs> now I'm really getting after. thirsty. He's good, you're quick. <laughs> really getting thirsty. Um, talk about a little bit about cooking with the chefs. What was that like? Because you got to do a couple cooking adventures, I know. Yeah, so just to re- remind you, I don't have to remind you, but we did a couple cooking classes. One we did in Barolo. So that day was a, it was a long day. We did a wine tasting starting at 1030 in the, in the morning. <laughs> we then went to eat a pretty heavy lunch with more wine. 
And from there, we, we walked around. It was a hot day. And from there, we went straight to, to – uh, it was another winery. Don't forget the corkscrew. Oh, yeah. that's right. We the did corkscrew a corkscrew museum. museum. Oh, yes, which there – this truly exists, yeah. right? That was, that was actually museum. pretty interesting. Was, yeah. yeah. And from there, we went and did a cooking class. And so that was fun that you guys made uh, – where we all made gnocchi – um, we tried to make gnocchi. So it didn't come <laughs> okay, out what happened? great. I, I, it didn't, it. Okay, oh. wait, wait, wait. What happened? Because how what can that happen? go bad? Yeah. Who, who, who had the bad gnocchi? What oh, happened here? It's, it's, I think it was maybe just a, a little trouble with the balance of mm-hmm. moisture okay. and flour. A little hard? or uh, No, actually no? the opposite. Ah. So by the time we were eating it, it was kind of like mush, but it still mm-hmm. tasted good. <laughs> it was good mush. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. And the other stuff was good. That... For that yeah. dinner, I, th- I thought? He was yeah. fantastic. He yeah. was another highlight. was that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Was that... Well, they, no, well, then the second, the second, second cooking, cooking class, class we did yes. was down in, I don't want to skip over Siena. anything, but it was, yeah, yeah, it was in Tuscany mm-hmm. outside of Siena, and it was at a um, Chef Andrea's mm-hmm. house. So we, we pulled up to his home again, beautiful estate on the top of a hill in Chianti, and um, his, right next to his home, his cousin owned vineyards, and so... The, again, scenery was amazing, but we get into um, Andrea's place, and there's, I think he had 22 chickens just walking around his his property. He does like kind of a walking tour of his gardens, explaining what you know what everything is. And his son is there, his son's girlfriend, the wife, the <laughs> what other family members are there. All helping out. Yeah, everybody's yeah. helping yeah. out, and there's tables. Set up, and he's got veggies ready to go. So we start. And I believe you all were in, yeah, enlisted to help were. as well. Yes. No cut fingers, no <laughs> lost limbs. Let's check, yeah. <laughs> because I know there was wine flowing at this point yeah, too. Always, of course, yeah. there was always wine, and we had a goat cheese tasting there mm-hmm. as well. Okay, yeah. did you? Excellent. Yeah, great. That's super. Was that? I'm assuming he made that as well, or no? They that was farm, from, or was that just from a local farm? Let me see if I can find yeah. it. it was oh, his, nice. his na- one of his neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Because they Cause do all does share. Olive oil. Okay, he does His the olive oil. His cousin does the wine. He does olive oil. Mm-hmm. So. Interesting to see some of that production too. Mm-hmm. You saw a little bit of that, right? Mm-hmm. As well. Yeah, we did. Maybe. I think we saw at least one olive oil mm-hmm. place. I, I would say at least one, right? Andrea, yeah. and then did. Uh, Can you remember? There was so <laughs> much. I said, almost I need to pull out my after photos. the ten thirty a.m. wine tasting. <laughs> <laughs> so we see. Yes. Okay. Uh, es Margarita goat cheese that you had there in Tuscany. Mm-hmm. Awesome. The, yeah, the cheese was from his neighbor, and then he brought in. Uh, Where, did you bring his, that goat back with you? <laughs> I wish. His other remember his other neighbor made the the meat that we had that night, and they they dropped it off, kind of all prepped. We got to talk us. about the meat. So, David, not oh. being a foodie, I saw some of these pictures, and you can too. We've got a video up at um, on the. Uh, uh, noon on Tuesday blog, noon on Tuesday.com. And Benissimo, you can see this video, but you went into the prosciutto and culatello aging caves and production facilities. And if you're not a foodie and have never seen this before, tell us a little bit about that, David, your impression. Well, I'm not a big meat person, but uh, I learned to love meat when I was there. And uh, it was just so fascinating the way they've, they've uh, kept these traditions. Yeah. Walking down in those caves. Yeah. Best if you're about 5'3". You know, <laughs> Did you bonk your head on yeah, any of the legs the there? the names of the famous people who have reserved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell us. Can you we saw say some. Who we saw? Yeah, go ahead. Why go not? Ahead. Yeah. Yeah, Lori. Who, who was it? I uh, knew there was some famous. Paul Allen. Yeah. Paul Allen. So Microsoft Paul Allen yes. has his own leg yes. of Culatello. Yes. Because we can't take the product I... out, but they can because they're special people. <laughs> Apparently Dang it. he, he, he sends his special. private jet to come pick up his Culatello. Maybe he could maybe we could commission like <laughs> space on the jet or something. That would be nice. <laughs> that would be good. Um because there was like looked to be like hundreds of of pieces hanging in these caves. Thousands. Oh, thousands thousands yes. of pieces Absolutely. hanging in the caves. And the, the condition of the caves, describe a little bit of that for everybody. What, what uh, would you, how could you use some words for that? Old. Old? <laughs> Rustic. Rustic. There Rustic. You go. <laughs> they, I mean, these, some of these culatellas, I took some close-up shots. Had, I mean, and I, I don't mean to gross anyone out, but had cobwebs, mm-hmm. mold. Mm-hmm. And Which like, is yeah. all completely natural yeah. yes. and a wonderful thing, right? Oh, yeah. And right. Culatello, in case you don't know, it's kind of like the butt cheek uh, of the pig. Yeah. I mean, it is like, the juiciest <laughs> part. And um, as I understand, you did get to meet the ingredients for these as well. We did. did. We got yeah. to meet the ingredients. You did. You Free. did. Mm-hmm. It's kind of um, emotional? No? Or just more real? It makes you yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty it's... badass looking pigs, though. I would not... You're not messing with them? No, guy. no. They looked rather large. They did. Yeah, yeah, these are the special black pigs. I mean, mm-hmm. all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I heard quite um, aromatic. 
as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the, so the, the emotional part about seeing seeing the pigs and then seeing the end product, basically, the emotional part for me is that I'm I'm very aware of how there is a huge disconnect in the United States and probably a few other countries in terms of concentrated animal farming operations mm-hmm. versus the small farms and, you know, direct source, locally source, and see it from beginning to end or virtually beginning to end product. So it's just something to remember that there's such a huge education to be gained by seeing a place like this. If, if you're an animal lover or whatever, great, but you have to understand that this type of meat production for the enjoyment of the end user is is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's not supposed to be McDonald's and, and in and out and you don't know where the meat came from. We know where the meat came yeah. from. Right. We saw them. You yeah. saw them, right? Mm-hmm. And respectful, right? Mm-hmm. A really respectful process. Right. Uh, is what I always think when and I see natural. that. Non-natural. Yeah, exactly. Traditional process. Yep. Traditional, natural. Yeah, really, really good. Um, you also, okay, we cooked, we ate. We drank, drank, got some education along the way, learned a little bit from the small yay, so, right? A right? little bit. Um, tell us about Parmigiano Reggiano, because that is, everyone's kind of seen pictures of the caves, you know, up on the. So. Uh, we, we, and, but until you're in there. What this, do you think? this is really kind of what I, I, I think what spawned this whole idea was, was when I went and saw, and I know you've been there mm-hmm. at least once, yeah. um, in Parma. The caves where they age Parmigiano Reggiano, which is the most popular cheese in the world, um, to be in there, to be in one of the the big um, sort of warehouses where they age the cheese is just it it blows your mind to see yeah. that much because cheese. To, uh, describe how many wheels are sitting in there. Hundred the, pound wheels of cheese. Yeah, well, they had I think twenty million dollars. It was twenty million. Twenty two thousand. Twenty two thousand. Bob, our financial analyst, who came along. <laughs> we did, did the, the math. math. Yeah, <laughs> street value. Looked at yes. Yeah, Fifty value. million, and they just yeah. let you guys wander about yeah. in there, right? Well, yeah, we this d- is so Italian. We did the math. Yeah. <laughs> had our uniforms on. You did. Yes, mm-hmm. you're very um, uh, cheese worthy yeah, uniforms. This was a bigger one that we were at because there's different sizes of places where they age the. Parmigiano Reggiano, but they had twenty two thousand wheels, and then we broke it down. Fifty million dollars. And how much does each wheel weigh? They weigh. We're going to round round off and say a hundred pounds, and the you know retail Parmigiano Reggiano goes for usually about twenty five bucks a pound. So you're talking, you know, street value. We did the math, and it came out to about fifty five million. Isn't that something? I mean, that's just. And that's just Phenomenal. one facility. Yeah. That was just, yeah. One facility. One yeah. And then watching them make those that big of a wheel. Did you guys enjoy that one? Compared again back to Silvio thinking of what you saw in his little production on his own versus what you see at Parmigiano Reggiano with the Yeah, big it was very cool. And, yeah. Copper vats. I found the part where they left humans involved. You know, there mm-hmm. were you know, one of the places had like a little outboard motor and they would start that thing up, but you know, it was mainly people. Talk about a workout. These guys were in, you know, yeah. on the edge of those vats with these good arms, long, right? Yes, mm-hmm. a lot of physical labor. But yeah, they, you know, it seemed to work. Which Seems is great. to work right. And yeah. we we were talking about that a little bit, David, too. That it, it really um. Doing production that traditional way, then they're providing jobs. I mean, this yes. is livelihoods for families um, and for the company, uh, the country. Excuse me, right? I mean, to to keep with those traditions, a lot of that probably could be done with a machine, right? I bet it could, yeah. Yeah, it but would you know, be here. right? Yeah. yeah, it would be, and that, and you kind of you lose something mm-hmm. from it until you see push someone. A button. Mm-hmm. You push a button until you see someone, you know, flipping that hundred pounds so mm-hmm. that it can, you know. Um, Drain and and be, uh, it's just like it's just really that was cool, another right? fascinating place where they took the wheels mm-hmm. or the the molds with the the cheese and the water and it was you know a couple inches above the mold and you saw an hour later it was it was just leaking this whole room crazy was just shedding right all this water draining yeah. draining draining, yeah, draining the way away yeah. yeah and that's way fascinating away. isn't that yeah the way went away <laughs> way but it away. doesn't go away because then they take that way and they spray it over the feed for the prosciutto yeah. pigs you yeah. know so you know nothing is gone to waste and it's all such a that's a really really cool thing yeah and that was a so there was a question from the audience about how Rob's Italian was on the trip. <laughs> oh yes can we uh, attest to that David Lori Rob's uh, Italian. I think I knew. I think I knew one word. Grazie. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Bella. Bella. My, Bella. My Italian is terrible. It didn't no improve. Italian. But it, it's funny. A lot of people thought or thought I was Italian. But, but remember, you're my wife's son. That's right. Someone oh, said, "Is this yeah. your son?" And almost like, no. 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 <laughs> 
There's a no way. What? <laughs> there, were, there were many times where people did start speaking to me in Italian, and I was like, you know, didn't know what to do. Oh, that's Sorry. really good. But, but not speaking didn't stop you guys from having a good time, right? No. Right. No. 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 And yeah. that's, I can't say enough about Sandro, who was our, our, yeah. our guide there. He was just incredible. Yeah. Uh, to, to be honest, we had another guest who I think returns tomorrow because she went on to Spain for a couple of days oh, at right. the end of the trip. Mm -hmm. But another guest, um, Ellen from Poway, <laughs> was um, really quite helpful also because she, she knew – a fair amount of Italian from having been there nice. when she was a mm -hmm. student. Um, spent some time there as a student. So it was doubly great, especially for us, because Ellen with, was with Neil and I at the end with her friend Jerry, so we had our, still had a little help with the translation. Sure. But it's very easy to pick up, um, you know, crucial phrases, and all the people at the establishments were very welcoming, and yeah, they they weren't – you know, uh, you know, like, what are you trying to say? You know, they they were fine with our our attempts. That's to nice. Communicate. Yeah, probably appreciated that a little, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Giving it a go. So, what do you say, like, to people that say, "Oh, you know, I don't know if I'd want to go on a a tour group." You know, is there any hesitation to that versus traveling on your own? And uh, I, I, it sounds like you all became you such great friends. Couldn't have gotten what we got if we didn't travel together. Mm -hmm. I think we're all friends, you know. Yeah, yeah, really great. Yeah, it was some... a great mix of people. Sure. Hey, Jerry was 80 years old, is 80 years old. Great. He was the oldest, and then we went down from there. So yeah. So it was, we all. And just had a blast. Out. Yeah, we had a lot of laughs, a lot of fun. A lot of fun, yeah. yeah. I was, I mean, I was nervous, you know, hosting this, and I wasn't sure who, who was going to be on this trip, and I, it the the group was so easy and so great, and everybody got along that real, I think that was part of what made this such a great trip, and um, when when we finished um, on the on the final night again, back to that that um, farewell dinner. One thing I that struck me was what makes what makes a trip like this is when what we're going to remember are the people, yeah. um, and so that I mean that was probably just as memorable or as important to this trip as seeing the Parmigiano Reggiano and seeing the all the cheese production and, and the wine tasting. So it was just all around on so many levels, just a great mm. experience. A real in-depth taste of Italy, yeah, yeah, in many ways then, yeah. Many ways. Mm -hmm. No, I, that's really good. I want to go back to that day that we did the Parmigiano-Reggiano tasting. Mm -hmm. So that that day we were outside of Parma. We stayed in a castle, which we all – Like a real castle. A real castle. A real castle. Not and like we, a Disneyland <laughs> castle, but a castle. We had, th <laughs> we had three things on the itinerary for that day. And it was Parmigiano Reggiano. Then we were going to go and, and see the whole cycle. So we, we went to see the pigs that, that uh, get turned into prosciutto after mm -hmm. eating the whey. And then uh, after lunch, we went and did a balsamico.